we can uh, jump into the other room or do we wait? I don't in this know. One? I'm thinking. Oh, Cube is. Where's Cube Magman? I think. Is he even playing? Let's see. Okay, so Cube and Magman are. I think playing their game against Sponge and Ivory King. Wait, no, they're not. They're with. Strong and Sponge. Oh, you jumped over here. Okay. And I'm not sure about Lowry and Flipstip. Flipstip's in this room. Anyway, so yeah, we'll work out which game to do next. We'll be back with that in just a moment, so stay tuned. That, that's it. I, I don't know why I ended on that tone. But yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> wrong, totally wrong inflection for the for the end of the sentence. Stay tuned? Yeah, um... Yeah, uh... We can end every sentence if it's a question. We can? Was that alright? Oh, that, 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 was sense. that okay? Were we, was there too much talking over each other? That, that was asking the audience, <laughs> actually. Oh, we could still jump into Sprung and Sponge versus QB and Macman. They just started. Wait, they just just started? Yeah, like one minute ago. Oh, that's game one. Um, what? Which game is it? Because I actually totally forgot to update my win counter last time. Oh, they already are in their second game. Okay, cool. Who won the first game? Whatever, we're doing it live. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing else going on anyway. Okay, so let me know who won the first game and I can update the win counter. Once I see which one's on which. Oh yeah, I just realized, Inculta was actually the choice of Kane and Rymark. As in, they were trying to win a macro game against Google Frog. It wasn't a macro game, it's that Inculta is the test case map for Oh right, of course, and Rymark probably figured that he and knows, Rymark is doing he has the knowledge advantage on that. He doesn't actually, because Google and I have been the ones who have been te Google more than anyone has been tested the one who's testing it out. Okay, so who? And it's gotten to the point where Reimark just can't beat him now. Yeah. Who won? But he was hoping that you know, I don't know, maybe showing off C. Well, I can see that, and I think that was actually a really good demonstration. But not as good as the game you had with Google Frog, but still a really good game nonetheless for demonstrating how C can work. Uh, the QB and his ally on the first game. Okay, thank you. And now we can start showing you guys the actual game in question. Game 2. So, game 2 has long since begun. I apologize for having missed it before. Oh, come now. There we go. Anyway, game 2 is up and running... And apparently my win counter is in the wrong spot. Hmm. Okay, you guys start talking about the game. I'll let you talk about it because I need to adjust some stuff. Okay, what I've seen so far is that uh, QB started air and took out uh, Sponge's commander. Um, and it looks like Sprung is going to lose his as well. Oh, or he isn't. He just barely survives, but he will be taken out by a incoming Shadow Swift or some sort of bomber. Yep, Raven. There we go. Sponge now they love, both love their commander. I think this is game over. Oh, well, that was... They, they lost an 8 metal income uh, from this. That was a time um, to come Sprung, in. Don't have time to introduce Sprung the factories. Has a, There's the factories. He has a constructor there reclaiming the dead commander already, so as long as they can both... both of them, They have constructors at both commander sites, and they have a lot more to, to land taken. So as long as they can reclaim those and turn it into something, they're excessive. They do now, not have more land taken. Yeah, they do actually, very slightly. But sprung in the sponge, it's a little hard to tell. It's not a significant uh, advantage. They do, don't have any armor. No, to you're right. They don't also. have that much of a land advantage. It's about. And they do not have any type of anti-air, so any attempt at raiding with those expensive raiders will get bombed. Oh yeah, and there's sure. none coming up. So, either. But I'm not sure what they're. Yeah, to do. from here on, it's very hard to come back. The Panthers look like they're trying to deal with the... Yeah, they're trying to deal with the Ravens just by stunning them out. And to that end, it's actually it's fairly pretty... successful. Wow. Yeah, Panthers... No, it's not. Well, okay, they're losing what? the number. This bomber is freaking out. Yeah. Well, it was a little <laughs> bit confused because it did get stunned out. And, of course, 0k physics are a little bit weird in that planes will always stay in the air no matter what happens to them. They don't actually be moving to fly. They just, they're just flying by the hand of God. 
They're, they're it slowly floats to the ground. They do very slowly. There's a little bit of gravity on them. Oh, there is? Okay. They do slowly float when they're... I think it's slow is the weirder one, where they're just moving slower, but otherwise in the exact same trajectory. Yeah. Um, QB's now switching into Cloak Factory, which I think is sort of the death knell. You know, it's always the oh, land switch, which yeah. you can't be afraid of. And Cubey's got the perfect position for that, too. And there's no there's no air rivalry. It's not like Sprunge and Sprunge are going to go, Oh, hey, by the way, we can take air superiority now, because Cubey's no longer investing. Like, no. No, I'm sorry. That's not happening. Because they're not playing air. And they don't have any anti-air. And they can't deal with that except with Panthers, which are admittedly doing an admirable job, given the resources they have, but still. Panthers just... The Panthers just took out a Raven, so... Yeah, they did. I mean, they can't hit them. Like I said, that's an admirable job. The yeah. problem is more speed and range and efficacy without losing one of their number, and admittedly, the fact that they're not dedicated anti-air does help when the Glaives come in and start trying to knock down the door, but it's a little bit hard to keep it going overall. Magman's Over, under Magman, pressure in the middle. Yeah, there's pressure coming from the Sponge, trying to push in here, unfortunately going to get completely stopped by these Ravens. Just yeah, counter pressure coming in here. Yeah, it's another Wait. Raven down. Went, try to go for the reversal on that one, but... It looks like a group actually, of four Panthers is enough to stop a single bomber. Yeah, it is. And Cube could actually... That's Magma a nice ratio, 1,200 to 300. The Sponge could go for that once again. Gonna get the repairs first. Good idea. Getting themselves healed up. But then after that, those Panthers could go in once again. And that was one fewer Raven. In fact, Ravens are, are no longer being produced. Cubay's no longer investing in they air. They might not be dying at this moment, but they are losing ground, and the income of the other team is growing. Yeah, it's true. Oh, not just growing. I mean, it's double. The north side expansion needs to be taken out. He's already got defenses yeah. up there. Could have taken it out earlier. He does have a Reaper, and even. should be uh, very good at that. Yeah, the Reaper would do that, but it's forgot about away. his Reaper, I guess. Especially, yeah, well, it's right here. Uh, here they come, the Ravens again. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, the Reaper is I really don't away. think the, the way Ravens work at the moment are... Wow, he dropped one bomb on each Panther each. <laughs> That's no, the one of them was way missed, not to but do yeah, it. that was that was unfortunate. They just moved back to heal up and then hope for the Lotus again. I mean, you're right though. Cube taking the south side, Magma to the north side. There is just no way that the Sponge and the Sprung are going to get in with what they have right now. I mean, Admiral they cannot job, get any into era because it'll get bombed. Yeah. They need to force down the middle with the Reapers. The Reapers will take ages to get bombed out, and they can easily take out that commander. And if they I can don't push down the middle and crack that, they might not stand a chance, because there's still not enough land forces. Zeus's are too slow. The um, Scorches are still really countered by the Panthers. Yeah, so this is going to be... And that's actually what the Sponge looks to be doing, or at least... No, they're, they're trying to poke the center a little bit, but they're not really pushing in. No real pressure at this point. The Panther is being still used for the real pressure. He's afraid and of crashes the Scorches. Coming in as well. The Scorches are pretty good. Crashes are coming in, so there is a bit of anti-air. Granted, it's going to be priority target, but that doesn't mean the Panthers have a bit less heat on them. Still, Panthers are... Well, they're, they're doing a bit better. They're starting to heal up. Auto repair is kicking in, and so is actual repair. And on top of that, we do, however, have... Well, more Swifts coming in for extra harassment. And the Ravens moving in for... You know, I'm a bit surprised, actually. Cubay has not gone for a spread to get rid of all the mechs. Like with the Ravens, just spread out. Cubay is not a real mech. I don't think he's made any constructor in the entire game. He only has his no, commander. No, no, no. He I only mean, focuses on Ravens, one thing at a time. Spread them across each metal extractor that the Sponge and Sprung have and take them out one at a time. Or not one at a time, like all at once. He's going around the, around the back. Oh, now, going for the factory. Going things. for the factory kill. And this is going to be successful, too. Heavy Tank Factory goes down while the Sponge... Looks to be trying to make their move in the center, but not making a move. Just poking around, trying to figure out the open points rather than pushing through. Not going for the, the factory kills strategy. nice and all, but it's actually not an efficient trade metal-wise. Uh, did he lose any bomber? He didn't lose. He lost one bomber. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's just an efficient trade, but in the the, the time the time they could have done that, he could have bombed every single mech on that's the map. That's what I've so. meant before. Like that, that's the thing. Cube could have yep, done that exactly. five minutes ago. Just spread out. On each me one bomber per, per metal extractor, and that'll do it. I mean, it requires a bit of micro because you don't see the metal extractor in advance, so you have to retarget as soon as it comes into view. But once that happens, you just got rid of all the metal you, extractors. But that that's still game. You know where they are, though, don't you? you they can't oh, hide. No, no, you the know metal where they are. You just the 
targeting oh, gets a little bit wonky. Well. Like the bomber doesn't always want to target because I've tried that before, and it seems like it's a little bit picky about when it wants to actually drop the bomb, and needs to actually have a proper yeah. visible target, not just attack a point in the ground or something like that. It was a good effort, I think, to recover from the comm snipes, but ultimately, it went, when they fell behind was when they when the two corners were taken. Yeah. Um, they didn't contest those. They fell behind there. They couldn't push through the middle. So ultimately, probably the comp times were just a little bit too hard. Well, the corners on Titan Duel, that is just a big thing. I'm very surprised that more players don't invest. Like, I see that a lot of the time when you see there's a skill differential, the top skill player will always go for the corners and the lower skill player doesn't seem to try to contest them as much as they should. Sometimes they do, but I think they might be a little bit worried that contesting the corners, they'll lose their main base because their center is open. But yep. contesting the corners early on, when it's just been taken, I mean, that's, that is proper timing. So, I don't know. It's it's a tricky call, but... I think taking the middle is the strongest... It's the, taking the middle is one of the, one of the strongest things you can do. The enemy can't go directly for your base. You can... Uh, they can sort of go around the side, but if they go up the north, you can, you can meet them at the north. It's a shorter distance traveled. And, um... You can sort of split their forces, split their attention. So if you then, when you expand around the corners, they have to pick to one side and the other, and they go around this bigger, movable sort of defense ball oh, in the middle of the map. Yeah. So taking the middle is really strong, but I think a lot of players they play team games where they just sort of have lanes and they just walk their commander at the the enemy, and they don't. And that, they sort of have a myopic view. Yeah, and that's where they don't see the thing. And problem though, I think with the middle, I'm not saying the middle is bad. I'm saying that what I've seen, like just from yep. what the games I've seen played, people don't tend to go for the middle. Sorry, people tend to go, yeah, for the sides, and whoever goes to the sides wins. I see what you mean, though. Punching a hole through the middle and then cleaning up one of the sides would do well, too. It's just that the punching a hole through the middle part is something I... I don't know. It doesn't seem to get followed up that much. And then the middle is still kind of open. I don't know. It's... From what I've seen... On small maps, mean, on, on eight, eight by 8s and what have you, taking the middle is one of the strongest things you can do like geyser planes or what have even though the sides have more of the metal value if you can take the middle you have sort of free reign to go to the sides and this is why some of the maps that I've designed um, deliberately have as very little metal in the middle so there's more metal to the sides and um, this map's a little bit like that where you have these it's almost defensible because of the mirrors and the um, Titan Jewel because the, the the rivers and the and the mountains they create choke points yeah which is one of the cr I, I quite like that map actually anyway Really we have semi-finals! Skazi and Yogg's Death versus Magma and Cube, I believe is going to be the first one. And then flips to Lowry versus Google Frog Aquadim, which we'll have afterwards, and then bronze match, and then finals, because we only had seven teams. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know why so it was very likely really to get poorly attended, I'm surprised. This is not usual. Well, I mean, <laughs> this is the it, it's, it's two players per team, so, you know, that's a lot of players. I know, that's true. <laughs> that's half of the spectators, man. I'm just thinking that we had... Well, like his last one v one tournament was twenty two players signed up, and then like twenty showed up ultimately. That was the biggest tournament we had, and then this is the smallest tournament we have for two v two with seven teams, although fourteen players, but still seven teams. Anyway, that'll be coming up in just a moment, so stay tuned if that's not coming up immediately, which it doesn't look like it is. And we'll be back. <laughs> 